up guys hope everybody's doing well and having a great day still getting in photos of the sun tucked in behind the smoke filled skies all across the country in fact over in the uk norway getting photos from all around the world almost you're looking at one from rochester new york sent in by mechanical judge very low on the horizon another exceptional photo the the smoke is acting like a solar filter so you can get some amazing photos of the sun like you see here out of kansas sent in by mark j another spectacular photo this one here is quite phenomenal too sent in by 42 james on youtube from upstate New York. The wildfire smoke from California, Oregon, and Washington is literally making its way around the world, much like that of some very historic large volcanic eruptions. Speaking of the sun, solar cycle 25 has begun. What that means, you're looking at a graph right here that, that kind of explains that the peak columns you see here are solar maximum, solar maximum peak, down in the valley, is solar minimum that would be like peak solar minimum and over here the big red arrow shows where we are right now at peak solar minimum just after 2020 and that's the beginning of solar cycle 25 and as you can see it's anticipated to be a little smaller than solar cycle 24 with regard to the maximum and 23 was slightly bigger than 24 22 slightly bigger more active than than 23 and the, the one prior to that 21 was slightly more active and you can see a trend here it's gotten quieter and quieter over the last 50 years with regard to solar cycles so we've officially um, entered solar cycle 25 so solar activity will slowly pick up what i wanted to talk about was neos um, asteroids in the neighborhood of Earth back on the 14th actually if you want to go to the 13th we had five near-earth objects none of them were highlighted though the ones you see here highlighted are very close the darker the highlight that means it's in between or it's going in between the Earth and the moon on the 14th we saw four 15th one 16th two the 17th one two three one of those being in between the earth and the moon now that one was 16 meters it's about 52 feet wide the 18th looking at one two three got two at 1.4 ld that's just beyond the the length of the earth from the moon that's 200 let's say 230,000 miles so add a uh, about half of that, a little over 300,000 miles from the Earth. So, so not a problem as far as a direct impact with Earth. But when you see the list like this, and I'm over here at spaceweather.com, and they do a good job of, of keeping up with these near-Earth objects, there's 2,037 that have been cataloged right now, and that list grows almost every day. Um, what we're looking at, when you see it get real active like this, a lot of times we'll see an increase in visible sightings inside the atmosphere of Earth because these don't usually travel alone and the smaller ones a lot of times are very difficult, if not impossible, to detect until they are grabbed by Earth's gravity and pulled into the atmosphere resulting in a dramatic fireball. What I'm getting at is watch the night skies, sometimes even the daytime skies, as we're entering a very active period. You can see two on the 19th, three on the 20th, uh, one on the 21st, 20 seconds, already got three. And look for those numbers to change. They will go up. This list will grow between now and the end of the month. So look for a increase in fireball activity around planet Earth. Speaking of planets, a giant planet has been found orbiting a dead white dwarf star 80 light years from planet Earth. Years ago, I was a original member of the Planet Hunters. Um, I've had people ask me about rogue planets and things like that, and I'm far from an expert when it comes to rogue planets. I really don't know anybody that is. I know people that are involved in the Planet Hunter expedition, which was a, a, a citizen scientist project of a group of volunteers 
that put this together. And years ago, there were 300,000 initial participants in this huge program. And I was one of the original 300,000. And the project was launched back in December of 2010. And I participated in the Kepler project. And, and I looked for planets for, for quite a while, for a couple of years, pretty actively. I cataloged a couple of candidates that were uh, potential exoplanets. Uh, rogue planets, if you will, that had not been discovered. So when I see things like this, knowing the n numerical possibilities of exoplanets being discovered, it doesn't surprise me. And this one here has a an incredible orbit. It orbits its parent star, which is, it's out of fuel, basically. It's a white dwarf. But it orbits it once every 34 hours, which when you're looking for a planet sometimes it may take a month it may take a year that's the thing when you see a transit like a, a a shadow go in front of the star that you're observing that's a potential exoplanet candidate but it has to do it like three times before it can be considered for a exoplanet or considered for further investigation but they have um, figured this one out, and it's even got a name, uh, WD1586b. It's a Jupiter-sized planet that orbits very close to the, the dwarf star, orbiting once every 34 hours. By comparison, uh, Mercury orbits the Sun, and that's our closest orbiting planet, once every 87 days, basically. So 34 hours is really, really cruising. Looking here, they're showing a ultraviolet flash of, of light in the sky detected by astronomers. It's a, a dwarf supernova. See that blue light right there in the center underneath my, my cursor? That's what I was trying to explain to people back in 2012. And I was having a difficult time getting it on camera and, and getting my message across. But that's what I saw in the sky, something just like that, a blue and a red flash. Um, every night for a week, I saw these 90 different times in the same part of sky, Hydra. And they were some sort of a, a like a Magellan cloud, a star, maybe a nova remnant that kept flashing in the same general area every night between 9.30 and 10.10 uh, for seven nights straight. I couldn't see them one night because it was cloudy, but that's what I saw, something very, very similar to that. So giant planet found orbiting a white dwarf. If you guys are interested, TikTok, you can find link below in the description box. This is my, my TikTok page. What I put up are little video clips of various things going on around the world. So if you want to check out my TikTok page, it's, it's been, uh, from what I understand, it's been purchased by Oracle. So it's now a U.S.-based company. So, you know, everything's kosher. Um, and you're actually seeing TikTok commercials now on television over here in the States. So they're they're promoting this platform and, and it's kind of quick and fun. I mean it's it's something different. They're they're minute long videos. Um, I have one over here if you'd like to check it out. It's Mr. MBB333, quite simple. And you can find it linked below in the description box. Thanks for watching. Have a super day and be safe out there.